Hi, in this video I want to talk about the full production of an awash song that we recently completed. I will take you through all the steps of the production, from the initial rehearsal up to when including the mastering and finally promotion of the song. So let's go! So in September October 2019 we started rehearsing a new song with awash, which at that time was called Never Alone. After that, the track was recorded in our home studios. It was produced by my friend uh, Peter from Perfect Sounds Unleashed, also the bass player in the wash. And I will link his socials in the uh, description below. And in this video, I want to take you through the various steps of the production process with a little bit more focus on the steps that happened here at Lanewood Studios, which were uh, vocal recording, electric guitar recording, and sending it off to mastering. If you're more interested in this full production cycle, I also have a playlist of a full song production in which I go into much more detail on the various steps of the production process. Depending on when you watch this video, this playlist may have one video or it may already have a couple of more videos, because at this time I've only done one, but I will gradually fill up that playlist when we progress in the production of the song. So first of all, let's start at the beginning of this new track, which is now called Shadow or Sun. As usual, the production of this track was started in the rehearsal room, and we rehearsed it at least for a couple of months before we started recording it. And this track was actually done pretty quickly because our bass player and producer Peter wanted to take this track to LA to do the mix with a famous producer, but more on that later. So first of all, let's hear some of the rehearsal recordings and how this track started. Let's go to the PC. Okay, so I have two rehearsal recordings. One uh, made pretty early uh, when we were working on the song and one a little bit later. So you can get an idea of how a song transforms while we're uh, yeah, practicing it and fleshing out our parts. These were recorded uh, with our singer's iPhone, so the sound quality is not fantastic, but it serves the purpose. And the first one is actually um, a very early version, and the final track ended up sounding quite a bit like this early version actually. Lyrics and vocal line are quite different from the release track, but the whole idea and the feel is very similar to how it ended up on the release. So let's have a listen to the first early version. You're fighting in your life Okay, so then we had a whole period that we tried to play it faster because we figured we need a more lively song, so that's uh, this version. You're fighting on your life Taking your heart Adding on your, your blame You're fighting for your Yeah, so it's definitely faster, uh, but I think it was a good decision to go back to the earlier version, which has much more feel and drive to it. Uh, and after we were satisfied with the arrangement, we made a recording in the rehearsal room, uh, a reference recording, and I actually have a separate video about how we do that for a new song that we're still working on, which will be uh, have a link up here somewhere. And then because Peter from uh, Perfect Sounds Unleashed actually produced this track, he made a Cubase project with this reference recording in it, and provided it to us to uh, add our parts. So our drummer used this project to add the drum part and then Peter played bass over it. And I think the next part was the acoustic guitar that was recorded in Peter's studio, which you see a picture of here. And after the acoustic guitar was recorded, I added my electric guitar part here at Lanewood Studios and we will go into that now. Okay, what you're seeing on screen now is a project that I got from Peter for recording my guitar parts and the green parts are actually my guitar parts that I recorded. So in this project you have a, a reference track. You have the, the drum track from our uh, drummer. The 
There's Peter's bass track. And in the beginning, Peter had a production idea to add some swells feedback guitar sound. So this is his guitar sound. He, I think he got it from some uh, VST. And I recorded that through my camper. Slightly different sounds, slightly different notes, but the idea is similar. I think it's a Michael Britt preset with some uh, swell guitar effects on it. And you're, you can hear this under the uh, acoustic intro that our singer plays uh, with his acoustic guitar. Now when you look at the first chorus, this is the uh, part I'm playing, which you're seeing over here. It's two tracks because I separated the basic guitar tone and the effects that are on the, on the camper patch that I'm using for that. The camper which you see in the background here by the way, because the camper has multiple outputs and you can separate the effect output from the basic amp tone. Uh, so this allows Peter to either uh, not use my effects at all and just add uh, studio plugins uh, for the similar effects or he can vary at least the amount of uh, effect that he wants in his mix so it's not all set and baked into what I deliver uh, to him. If I play these uh, parts together for example, you'll hear this. So that's the main electric guitar part for the first chorus. These are just the effects. And this is just the direct guitar sound. Now those are parts I basically repeat during uh, each chorus. So you see on the same track, you see well very similar parts. They're not copied, I play them all again, just to give little variations also where the song needs that. But uh, the part is very similar. Then there's the first part, which applies the same technique. Also um, split up effects and direct guitar sounds. And together that sounds like this. If I uh, play this together with the drums and the bass, for example, sounds like this. Then there is a bridge part for the guitar, which is a bit more uh, single note work. The bridge is also where I start a sort of a rotary uh, tremolo uh, guitar, which uh, sounds like this. And together with the other guitar parts and the drums and bass. It sounds like this. And at the very end I'm playing a bit of a solo uh, under the lead vocal. And that sounds like this. I'm talking about this part. And those are actually the electric guitar parts that are in this song. So next up uh, is a vocal recording. 
which Peter would normally do in his home studio. Only in this case, that wasn't available and uh, we were kind of in a hurry to uh, finish everything up before Peter went to LA. So we actually did the vocal recording here at Lanewood Studios with Peter producing. I uh, basically set up the preamp, mics and made sure that everybody had his own tea, which is a very important job in the studio, being the tea boy. So we recorded using a Peluso 2247 limited edition mic, which is a clone of the famous U47 mic. We then went into the Heritage Audio 73 EQ preamp, which is a clone of a 1073 Neve. And then we went into a Rupert Neve Designs 5043 compressor. This next video shows how uh, Peter, the producer and bass player, and Geert Singer are listening back to vocal takes and trying to figure out what to do differently or what to retake or what to comp. Peter is commenting on some words that maybe could have pronounced a bit better. And yeah, they basically write down notes. Here tries to remember what he's going to do different. And then they're going to re-record some of the vocals. Okay, so let's have a look at the vocal recording project that resulted from this session. This is a new project that Peter prepared for the vocal recording. It basically has similar tracks as that you just saw in the electric guitar recording project. It has a guide track. Um, it has the drums again. Bass. Peter put all my electric guitar tracks on uh, one track for this uh, recording project. And because the keyboard player hadn't played his part yet, uh, Peter basically uh, made a temporary uh, keyboard part because it's nicer for the singer to play to a full production of the song so that he knows what's going on with every instrument. Uh, Peter and Geert had also managed to do the uh, acoustic guitar recording in the meantime in Peter's studio. So when we put all this together, it sounds like this. And now on to the vocal parts that uh, were recorded. This is the main uh, vocal track uh, that Geert sang. As you can see here, there's really only, he did two takes and a small part, which they weren't happy with in a third take. And then the total vocal part was comped from these uh, two full and one partial take. Forever be one. He also dubbed um, this part to get a more uh, fuller sound. Forever be one. Forever be one. And although we usually do this for uh, wash songs, usually the dub part is very low in the mix. But it was a production choice to actually make this uh, part quite prominent. So you will very clearly hear it in the mix as well. Then there is a background vocal part, which I'm not even sure that it made onto the mix. And there was a low doubling part, which was used in the verse in this example. You make yourself disappear. And together with the main vocal, it sounds like this. You make yourself disappear. And again, uh, it was a production choice to uh, feature also this background vocal part quite prominently. So please listen to the full track because you'll hear uh, this vocal part quite clearly in there. 
And what we always do as well is that we record a fun track where the singer uh, just ad libs throughout the song and then we pick out the, the nice parts which sort of fit. So usually there's a lot of stuff which, yeah, it's just for fun and doesn't really belong into the song, but here he had a nice uh, yell at some point. Which, together with the other vocals, gives something like this. You're the light. I still see. And if we turn everything on, then you get something like this. Now obviously this is not mixed, so the vocals are quite low, but I hope you get a bit of an idea of uh, what a song at this level of production sounds like. And um, yeah, listen to the full release track if you want to hear the, the final. Now early 2020 Peter went to LA to uh, meet up with uh, Warren Ewart in Spitfire Studios, which is Warren's studio in the Hollywood Hills. And uh, Warren is famous from producing Aerosmith, the Frey and lots of other uh, artists. He also has a YouTube channel called Produce Like a Pro and a very vibrant community of uh, mixers and engineers um, in the academy, uh, of which Peter is a member and that's actually how he got into contact with Warren in the first place. These are some of the, uh, the pictures of uh, Peter in uh, Warren's studio and a little video on how they worked on the track. After Peter came back from LA, the band listened uh, to the mix that was produced and the mix went back and forth a couple of times. Warren and his assistants made some changes to the mix as requested by us and, and it finally ended up as the mix that you can hear on the release. After we received the final mix, we had it mastered at emastering.eu where they do some uh, nice analog and digital mastering and to give you an impression of what that brings this is the unmastered track and this is the master track, but they both have been level matched. So part of the mastering is to bring that final touch on it and also to bring it up in level and to make sure that it sounds good on uh, most systems. Uh, but when you actually listen to the difference leveled, there's not a huge difference. Even now listening on YouTube with all the YouTube compression that it does to the audio, maybe you won't even be able to hear any difference, but I'm going to try it anyway. So this is an acoustic uh, part, first the unmastered, and then the mastered part. You're the one, you heal me when I die. You're the light, you make me see behind the Yeah, to me the master track just sounds more finished and it's much more contained, especially in the loud parts. There was some boomy stuff happening on my system and that completely disappeared when I heard the master track. After we received the master, we arranged digital distribution, which we do via CD Baby. I think it's up to uh, 30 different channels that our music will be uh, available on. After arranging the digital distribution, we started uh, pre-promoting it via uh, the social media. For example, you can arrange a Spotify pre-save and you can arrange uh, ads on the social media to make sure that yeah, you get the proper attention. If you want to know more about any of the steps that I showed you or about the social media promotion or digital distribution, please comment and I'll make a separate video about that subject. 
Yeah, so that's a short summary of uh, the making of this track. I hope you like it and I hope you're going to listen to it on Spotify or any of the other streaming services. And later today we will also release a lyric video, a very creative one, on YouTube. So please have a look at that one as well. And I hope you like it. We're very proud of this track. Thanks again for watching. I hope you liked it or find it useful. And remember, I have a similar series of videos which goes into much more depth about the whole production process. And I will link to a separate playlist for that. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, ring a little bell icon so you know when I post something else and see you soon. For